Welcome to the Clock Tower. I'm Brandon, and today we're looking at Psychono Flat. I want to point out this is just the overview of the deck itself. This is going to be the deck going forward for us. It definitely has some challenges up ahead against it in this upcoming meta, but despite that, it definitely has some potential as well. This list does combine pieces from the old set and the new set. With that in mind, we're going to kind of break down each level and then kind of go from there. Uh, but before we do that, we want to kind of touch on the combos really quickly. Um, our level one combo being this Megami. If you have two or more other characters, it gets 1,000 power. And the climax combo itself with the bar, it gains twin drive and the Obero effect. Uh, so with climax, it sits at 6-5, which is not very big. However, having the Obero effect and the being able to twin drive can, can help this deck essentially be able to side a little bit more efficiently. So you can side things that are bigger or potentially uh, get power in other ways to step over things. But the bounce back effect is the biggest part, being able to get these cards back into hand to try to keep as much momentum in your favor as possible. And that being on a bar combo allows that to recur rather efficiently. Our top end, which is the other big combo of the set, is also the Mega Me. Memory condition, uh, if you have up to four cards in memory, all these things happen. If you have two cards in memory, you get 2,000 power. Three cards in memory, your opponent can't play backups from hand. Four cards in memory, it gets hexproof. Uh, so really incentivizing that memory condition there uh, to really make this bigger. Heals on play. It also has pay one on reverse, burn two. Cheap burn two can't be chosen by anything, so you can kind of bypass some of those more defensive effects. And... Gets powered by itself, so any kind of additional assists would only bump that up even higher. So, especially with your opponent not being able to back up against it, this can be a pretty challenging top end to deal with. And the trick is getting there. And as we do that, we look at level zero. Level zero is kind of where we kick these things off. Uh, so we start off with the Nostalgic Memory Airy on play. You can pump a character up 2k power. So if we're trying to bump up our level one combo up to a power condition, this is the way to go. It also has the ability of pay one, pitch one, to send this card away to memory when becoming reversed to search for one character and put it into hand. So it's a potential deck search, so it could potentially even thin out your deck a little bit even more. Helps you try to get into that level one combo and benefits that memory game that you're trying to play for for the end game. So a pretty efficient tool to try to keep that in play. Worth noting it is 500 power, so any kind of minus power effects can remove it from field. Uh, which there are a significant number now currently out there, but having this card is a very efficient way of trying to kick off that memory chain early. We also run four copies of the Unexpected Gift Izumi. So it is a mill runner. So at the beginning of your opponent's phase, mill card. If it's a character, you can move it to any position. It also is a pay one, send to memory. Look at the top four, choose one character and add it to hand. Uh, notably, it does need the game trait, so that actually does come relevant in the set. But... For this deck, it's going to be any character chosen here. Uh, again, another card that sends away to memory, another way to be able to just kind of stockpile that memory game as we're going through. Then we have Betrayal and Farewell Utah. Uh, when your other character attacks, it gains 1,000 power until end of turn, which is not a huge deal, but it can be this, this last card swinging up to 2k5 power. Also has the ability, pay one, send a memory, and when your other character is frontal attacked, to return that character to your hand. So it is a memory JC, which can help us save cards we want to help refund that combo, especially if we uh, fail at getting our condition for the climax for our level one combo. So we just don't have the climax. We can use this to kind of recur that level one combo still, despite not having it in play. We also then run the first time feelings Mega Me. The main effect for this card is it's a brainstorm, a pay one rest self search brainstorm based on the number of climaxes revealed. But the big part of this is it can change into a uh, level one uh, red Megami, which allows us to be able to kind of really kick off our memory condition game going forward. And the best part is this is an act ability that you can just ditch it, salvage the one in waiting room, and put it on that same spot. So essentially you can just trade out one for one. You're not losing a brainstorm to this effect because you're just switching out one brainstorm for another. Uh, so having brainstorm at one on a card that's going to help you with your memory condition, pretty ideal. And the fact that it can just kind of change into it for free, pretty awesome too. Last up, we have the Night Together Utah. Uh, this is a pay one, clock yourself, put this card in memory. So on reverse, you can, if you do pay the cost, choose a character in your waiting room and return it to hand. So pay one, clock one, 
memory this away to salvage a character from waiting room. Again, just more access to different parts of your deck. This is a fantastic card as well to be able to, again, fulfill that memory condition. Pay one, clock one, salvage one. A little expensive, but it can be any character, so you, can, you don't have to be confined to a level condition. So you can even use this late in the game as well to get your endgame pieces. So still a card worth having in the deck. It is a little expensive especially, but and the timing is a little funky if you want to use it for leveling yourself. But having this card is also a pretty useful tool in this deck. Notably, most of these cards interact with memory in some way. In fact, four out of the five uh, utility cards here uh, will send themselves off to memory because we're trying to build up that memory as much as possible. We're going to be playing with some very, very low stock counts with this deck. Uh, so having a pretty cheap finisher at the top, essentially when they get the reverse, they've got the trigger to be able to pay out. So you can effectively do it for six stock at the top. So you don't need a lot of resources to make that happen. Uh, however, this deck is very stock intensive. So just something to be aware of as going forward with that. Going into level one, again, we have our level one combo, that Wavering Sentiments Mega Me. Uh, went over it before earlier in the video, so I'm not going to hit it again too much. Uh, but just n worth noting that we do kind of dive right in with our combo at level one. This is probably one of our most important pieces of that one. We also run Fueled by Defeat Errory. During your turn, if there is a card in memory, it gets another 2,500 power. And on attack, if it's facing level two, it gets 6,000 power. So this is a pretty decent level two killer. Especially with cards like, I don't know, Alice existing in the meta. You can have a free level 2 killer that can reach pretty significant power thresholds, being 2,000, being 12,500 power by itself, is pretty nice. Climax puts that at 13,5, which is just about that right power threshold to mess with Alice, but again, also plays off the memory condition too, so having memory makes this card even better. We also run the uh, green event, the 1-0 pulling all-nighter to game. This comes from set 1. The ability is being able to rest two of your characters, and they can't stand during your next stand phase. But if you do that, you can search your deck for up to a character, add it to hand, and then choose a character in waiting room and stock it, and then bottom deck this card. So, effectively, your deck remains the same. You trade out this card for a character. Uh, notably, it can be any level character. You also then get a free stock out of it as well. Uh, which is pretty important, especially since we have a lot of stock things happening. And it puts on the bottom deck so you could potentially even make sure your climaxes are not on bottom of deck. So it's a pretty efficient tool to be able to do that. The cost is pretty significant, but if we remember our zeros, being able to switch those things out, for example, if you rest the level zero brainstorm at one and the Izumi, you can effectively pay one with the Izumi that you just got off of the event, and you can just trade out the brainstorm for the other brainstorm in waiting room. So effectively, it doesn't apply in that situation then, because effectively you just kind of effectively traded this card out for another card you actually want, and then be able to go through four cards in your deck as well. It's a pretty neat interaction, and I think it's one of the things that makes this deck really interesting, uh, being able to play around with this event and that kind of combination. I run it as a three of. I wanted to make it more, but I, was having, I just I couldn't justify the slots to make it happen. I also run the Victory Through Persistence Utaha. On play, you can subtract a 1,000 power from one of your opponent's characters and is a level 1 bomb. Uh, this is really nice into those really big level 1 boards uh, to be able to remove those. The minus 1,000 power is also very significant too. You can kind of essentially, like for example, drop the Alice by 1,000 power and then be able to kind of step over with the other 1-0. Especially when you have a level 1 combo that's not very big, being able to minus power at any stage of the game is pretty helpful, especially when you're trying to recur that combo. This is the one card that's like could be cut from this list. Um, you could trade this out, especially for the other level one event, and then bumping up the brainstorm at zero. You could you could do those things as well. I found it really helpful to have it, especially against the big level ones. I think that might be more helpful later down the road, uh, but you're kind of also just trying to go through that level one combo. So th it's. It's hard. This is a really hard card for me. I really wanted this in the deck, but it's also probably the first card I would cut if I was to make changes to this deck as well. We also then run the level one brainstormer as well. Uh, we mentioned earlier when we were talking about the other level, when we were talking about the level zero. This also has the ability to pay one cent to memory. Uh, if you do, you could choose the two one 
uh, Mega Me to be able to spawn that to board from Waiting Room. So it's another card that you don't necessarily have to have in hand to just pay one, send this off to be able to get the 2-1 on the field. So again, this is also another opportunity as well to pair with that event. You could breast this to spawn another one that's still standing and potentially do another event. Being able to play into that is pretty cool as well. And then there's also, again, another brainstorm, the pay one rest self search for character based off climax is revealed. Going into level two, we have the Before Bed Megami, which is the card that transforms from the Brainstorm into this. It's a level assist, and you can also then pay one, send this to memory. See the theme? At the beginning of climax phase, to bring in the 3-2 from Waiting Room combo, and also allow the heal effect to happen that way. Uh, notably, it happens at climax phase at level three, uh, so you can't early play the, the level three combo, but you can use this to essentially get one from Waiting Room. Uh, so you don't necessarily have to have all of them in hand, and this also makes it cheaper. So you can essentially just pay one by getting rid of this one to just spawn it to field. So effectively, if you had three of these, if you just had them on board, it would only cost three additional stock to make that happen. Um, but effectively, getting to this process, you've probably paid the stock cost up front. So you could make it relatively cheap to just play down at the end, having used all that stock early. A lot of it's going to depend on how much time you have in the game and how many times you've been able to cancel. As a way to help with that, we also run the Stealthy Classmate Megami. Uh, this is the free fresh backup, so pay two. By free, it's not like actually free. It's pay two additional stock, so a total of three stock. Put this card in waiting room to refresh your deck, but you don't take the refresh point damage. Uh, but being able to reshuffle your deck at any point in the game, especially on your opponent's turn, you can kind of control your deck state a little bit more efficiently. You can also use that to pay out climaxes as well. And if you're building up a significant amount of stock, that's going to be the real key with this card, is trying to figure out how much stock you're actually running. Um, because you're running so stock light, this is very much like that emergency out button. Um, but when you need it, you need it. And so it's definitely worth at least running one copy of in your deck, which is what I do. As we look at the endgame itself, we look at a new story of Megami. Kind of talked about this before earlier at the beginning of the video. The biggest thing being that on Salvage, being able to pay one on Reverse Burn 2 is a pretty nice closer. It's going to be very reminiscent of Marine, except being able to effectively deny any kind of your opponent's play against it. Your opponent can try to play around this by not having a board, so you can't actually get the reverses. However, your cards also sit pretty big as well defensively if you're going to sit with this with the back row assist sitting at 12 5 with this backup uh, up to 15 is a pretty nice number to sit at if you need to because it heals you can also try to play into that heal down you've been trying to compress through memory this whole game so you can try to bank on your compression as well to survive an additional turn it definitely plays into that kind of strategy of that memory compression that you've been playing all game uh, just putting everything you can into memory it is a interesting card to have at the top, especially if it goes to Waiting Room. You're not super worried about it going to Waiting Room because you can essentially spawn it out with the 2-1 uh, back row assist once again. So it is a very interesting card, and it's a very interesting card to play into as well as play with, especially right now. It hits at the, just about that right power threshold number, being about 13-5 with Climax on attack. Without any kind of counterplay available, it can get over most things. So it actually will see some... I think this will actually see some play. I don't think it's going to be nearly as competitive because it's going to struggle really hard early. And it really wants to play a longer game than I think a lot of decks will allow it to play. So I think that this deck is probably going to be a little bit more power crept, especially with like some of the different kind of matchups it's going to have. But I think that it's also going to be good enough against a lot of things that it's not a bad pick either. I am biased towards memory compression, so I think it's a fun opportunity, a fun deck, but there is going to be some struggles with this deck, and its age is going to show, especially as you continue to play into newer and newer things. As we get towards fall, this deck really falls off really quickly, so just to kind of be aware of that as we hit fall, it has some pretty bad matchups coming up, uh, so this deck is very has a very small shelf life of when this actually can be usable. And I know some would argue that it's already passed. So there's kind of a cautionary tale with that as we look ahead towards the future, as well as one of some of the things that are coming out here soon. So, But overall, I think it's a fun deck to play with. It's a fun deck to try to maximize your memory compression 
this is kind of the deck to do it with. So looking forward to seeing how this continues to play out as the season continues. There's not too many of the regionals left in the season by the time this fully airs and is available for play. I'm curious to see how this affects teams and if it ever actually makes a top eight. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing what happens in this season yet to go with this deck coming out. So uh, thanks so much for watching. Uh, be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, do the YouTube thing, and we'll catch you in the next one.